Good morning, Livingston Parish and whoever else may be watching. Today, we are going to take a journey with Jones and the Livingston Parish Library. Today's trip is to Desert Habitats. We are going to show you several different links. If you're interested in visiting these links on your own, down in the YouTube description right here um, is a link to our slide, pre slide deck presentation or over here on the screen, you can open the camera app in your phone and hold it over the QR code and the presentation will automatically pull up there as well. My name is uh, Amanda Jones. I am the school librarian at Live Oak Middle School. And with me today from South Branch of the Livingston Parish Public Library is Miss Desiree Dizadair. She is joining us today to discuss desert habitats. Now, we are going to explore desert habitats today. Did you know that deserts cover 20% of the world's land? I did not know that until I started getting ready for this virtual tour. We are going to visit several, not several, three different um, desert habitats. We're going to look at them in uh, virtual trips, and then we're going to look at some of the animals. Now, before we get started, I just want to let you know that a desert is a habitat that formed due to low level of rainfall. There are different types of deserts though. It's not necessarily all hot deserts. Some deserts are cold deserts. Deserts can be hot during the day and cold at night, um, but there are some cold deserts in the Arctic and Antarctic. Today though, we're actually looking at three different hot deserts. Um, and the first that we are going to start off with is the Sahara Desert. So these are the three links that I'm going to be looking at today. The first one is the Sahara Desert. Now this is a link called Air Pano. Now on this website, you can click this little book icon and it will take you to information about what you're looking at. Over here on the right, different pictures from this desert habitat. Let me click on this first picture right here. All right, so we are now in the Sahara Desert. And as I'm scrolling around, I will give you a few facts. Now, the Sahara Desert is a desert in Africa, the continent of Africa. It is 3.6 million square miles wide or large and takes up 31% of the entire continent of Africa. Let's zoom in a little bit. We can zoom out. It is the largest hot desert in the entire world. The only, the only actual deserts larger than the Sahara are the two cold deserts in, uh, Arctic, in, in the Arctic Circle and in Antarctica. And so um, this is the largest hot desert in the world. As you can see, it is comprised of a lot of rock formations and sand dunes. The Sahara Desert is very famous for its sand dunes. Let's look at another picture. Let's look at it at night. Here we have the Sahara Desert at night. When you're in an area that doesn't have a lot of street lamps and city lights, you can actually see the stars a lot clearer. So this is the Sahara at night. As you can see, rock formations and sand dunes. Now, most of the Sahara Desert is actually rock. There are large areas of sand dunes, but the majority is rock formations. You can see here just rock and sand as far as the eye can see in any direction. Very, very sparse vegetation in the Sahara Desert and the temperatures here average between 100 to 104 degrees Fahrenheit. There are 2,800 species of vascular plants and a lot of the animals that you will find here in the Sahara Desert would be um, your large, they have a very large fox population, lizards, cheetahs, hawks, and vipers. So that is the Sahara Desert. The next desert that we are going to visit is the Wadi Rum Desert. And I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but I've always said Wadi Rum. Um, this is in Jordan, the country that is also... There we go. Now, <laughs> I always have trouble clicking it to enlarge it. The really cool thing about this desert is it is used for a lot of movies, especially when they film movies that take place on Mars, which is really cool. So a lot of the movies that you've seen, like a lot of the Star Wars, specifically Rogue One, and The Martian with Matt Damon, some of the Transformer movies, and the live-action Aladdin were all filmed in this desert. 
which I think is pretty cool because it, it does mimic the Martian landscape of Mars. Now, um, this is, Wadi Rum Desert is also known as Valley of the Moon. It's a valley of sandstone and granite rock. In, like I said, in the country of Jordan, it is mostly composed of red rock and red sand dunes. It is home to several natural arches. Let's look at a picture of one of the arches. Several natural arches. See here, you can walk through it. Well, probably climb through it because it's rather large. And it is home to several prehistoric rock engravings. So you can visit this desert and look at uh, and view a lot of prehistoric rock engravings. But as you can see, this is the last picture we're going to look at in Wadi Rum. But you can see why they would use this for a lot of movies that um, they need, like the Martian Mars landscape. Does and it have does it have the same kind of animals as the Sahara? Pretty much, yeah. I was looking through here. Pretty much the exact same animals. Um, maybe a few different sub, uh, smaller species, but for the most part, same same thing. Now, some parts of the Sahara Desert um, that are closer to the grasslands, you'll find things like elephants that you would not specifically find in Wadi Rum Desert, but for the most part, same animals. Mm -hmm. All right, and the final place we're going to look at is the Gobi Desert. That is in Mongolia. Let me click to enlarge that. And as you can see, that's it's kind of boring compared to the Sahara Desert and the Wadi Rum Desert. Let's see if we can find another picture. There we go. So this is actually a picture of an oasis uh, in the Gobi Desert. Now, the Gobi Desert is a large desert in China and Mongolia. So whereas the other two deserts we were looking at were in Africa, this desert is in the continent of Asia. And you can see it has a little more greenery than the other deserts. This is like a semi-arid. Semi the other two deserts were very hot and uh, dry. This is semi-arid landscape. Let's see. Here we have some more pictures, some rock formations. This is the sixth largest desert in the world. So this is the sixth largest desert in the world. I'm just kind of spanning around for you to look at the different rock formations. It mostly consists of sand and rock. It's a cold desert, though. It's colder than the other two deserts we're looking at. The average temperature in this desert in Asia is 31 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's a lot colder than the other two deserts. It's not as cold as the Arctic and the desert in Antarctica, but it is a colder desert. Now, animals that you would find here would be camels, wolves, snow leopards. So in the other two deserts, you wouldn't necessarily find snow leopards. But due to the high elevation and um, precipitation up in the taller rock formations, you would find um, snow leopards. So speaking of animals, let's go look at some of the animals that you can find in a desert habitat. Now, I have put three links on here. But the one I absolutely love is from the San Diego Zoo. So let's head over to this website, which is the first link. So the San Diego Zoo, we're going to look at several different um, animals. The first one we're going to look at is a chameleon. So let me scroll down and find my chameleon. There he or she is, chameleon. So let's click on that. Now, this website has lots of information. You can find out the class, order, family, genus, species. You can scroll down talks about lifespan, anything and everything you would ever want to know about the chameleon. But I'm just going to show you a picture and talk about it. Um, there are over 200, 202 species of chameleon that can be found in deserts. Let's look at this large picture right here. Or you can find them in Petco. <laughs> um, they are found in hot climates. So they are only found in the hot deserts. They would not be found in the colder deserts. They live primarily in Africa and Madagascar. They can be found in other countries and deserts that are warmer, but primarily in Africa and Madagascar. They mostly live in trees and bushes, so you wouldn't generally see a chameleon walking around on the ground. They eat insects, but did you know they have also been known to eat lizards and small birds? Now, I bet that is a sight to see, a chameleon eating a small bird. I don't know if that's a sight I want to see. Um, we are also now going to look at a dung beetle. So let's look at this dung beetle. And again, this is the San Diego Zoo. And you can scroll down and you can find anything and everything you ever wanted to know about the dung beetle. 
but I'm going to give you some facts while we're looking at the picture. So a dung beetle feeds on feces, which is poop, feces, and can bury 250 times their mass of feces in one night. That is a lot. They live in many habitats all over the world, but they are always found in hot deserts. Um, in fact, they are found on all, all continents except for Antarctica. Now, they roll along, they roll these uh, little dung balls along um, and build them and they eat them and they um, live in them sometimes. But an interesting fact that I found out is that in Southeast, Southeast Asia, they're kind of large beetles. They are used as a food source. So people in Southeast East Asia often will eat beetles. Here in the Live at Middle Library, we've done some sampling of some insects um, for a book project we did. We've never had dung beetle though. We had water beetles. Did y'all read Boy Bites Bug? Yes, we did. We read Boy Bites Rick, Bug Rick, and Rick, we uh, Skyped Rick. author Rebecca okay, Petrick. And she ate some bugs and we ate some bugs. And we did eat the water beetle. Um, well, some of us did. I did not eat the water beetle. That's, I, that's too much for me. Um, but some of the kids did. Let's see. Let's look at a meerkat. If I can even find the meerkat. You just oh, passed him. Did I pass it? Yeah. Nice. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Meerkat. Now, I, um, you always see meerkats in a lot of movies. Actually, a small type of mongoose that is found in Southern Africa. They love to travel and live in packs. So you would hardly ever find one alone. They travel and live in, in packs and in families. They also only live in stony dry deserts. So you wouldn't find these in Antarctica. Like I said, they're found mostly in Southern Africa. There's a lot of these. So they are not in danger of ext uh, extinction anytime soon. But if you want to learn about um, the meerkat, you can scroll down here and you can click all around and learn everything you need to know. Another cool thing about the San Diego Wildlife uh, website is that they also have wild, not wild animal, live animal webcams. So you can click on these and some of these species that you will find in desert habitats and in other habitats, you can click on here and you can look at their live animal cams. The final, let's see, the final animal I want to talk to you about is a rattlesnake, which I'm trying to remember. Oh, it was back on my other site. Let's scroll down, not that site. All right, and let's discuss rattlesnakes right here. Now we have rattlesnakes in Louisiana. I've never personally seen one in the wild, but we do have rattlesnakes in Louisiana, but um, they're often found in hot desert, dry climates. They are venomous snakes. Now, I always thought that, um, you know, their bites were fatal. But what I've read is that they're not usually fatal if you can get treated fairly quickly. And that's not to say you want to go and get bitten by a rattlesnake. Uh, but they are native to the Americas and think can be found in many habitats. But they prefer temperatures from 80 to 90 degrees, which is why you would find them in the desert. Desert habitats. Their feeding habitats, uh, their feeding habits include eating small rodents, which help keep the population down and helps the ecosystem. Several species of rattlesnake are listed as endangered though. So that is just some of the wildlife from a desert habitat. If you would like to look at more resources about desert habitats, there are some links here. There's also a, vi a video on deserts by National Geographic. Now, some of my favorite books um, that, some are directly about deserts. Some are kind of about deserts. Um, this, my students love to draw desert, or they love to draw anything. So the Livingston Parish Public Library has a book on how to draw desert animals. They also have a book called Deserts, which is part of this True Book series. Now, the True Books, if, you have a, if you're a student in Livingston Parish, you have an e-card that you can access all of the True Books online on the Livingston Parish Public Library's website using your e-card. And one of my favorites is the desert book. There's also a middle grade book called Insignificant Events in the Life of a Cactus. It's actually a fiction, um, but I included it in there because I really love this book. And an adult book that you might want to read would be 127 Hours. This is an adult book. Kids, not for you, but if you're an adult, um, you, you might have seen the movie uh, Between a Rock and a Hard Place by Aaron, or 127 Hours Between a Rock and a Hard Place. This book was written by Aaron Ralston, who survived um, being stuck in the desert in Utah. So 
those are the book su suggestions that I have. Now I'm turning it over to Miss uh, Desidere, and she is going to tell you about a few programming um, options in Livingston Parish. Hi, everybody. Glad to see you. I'm Desiree Desidere at the South Branch Library, so I'm going to talk to you about some of our upcoming programs. So we are a few weeks into our summer program, but you still have plenty of time to register, and you can go to our webpage at mylpl.info to do so. Um, once you go there, you go to our events, and our calendar will show you which, what everybody has coming up. We have multiple programs coming up. Some are virtual, some are both virtual and in-house, but they have to be registered for. Our numbers still have to be minimized, so you must register. You can't just come and show up. You have to be on the registration. So if you have trouble with getting online and doing so, you can always call a branch and we can help you out with that. Um, at our South Branch, we have uh, the movie night is upcoming, and we also have Paint Me in the Desert. We have two of those programs. One of them will be featuring a Finnick Fox, and one of them we will be featuring uh, a lizard. So you can come and check out both of our painting programs, and some of the other branches will also have different options of what you can paint according to their biome. Each branch will have a different biome. So be sure to check us out. Look in our newsletter. Look online. Whichever option is better for you, but you can always come visit us and ask us in person as well. So we hope to see you soon. And I hope all of you are participating in summer reading, particularly my students at Live Oak Middle. <laughs> I hope you're participating in the summer reading program because I am. Um, and I always look at what is the requirement is usually what three or five for adults for the adults. It is three for teens. It is also three um, for youth and children that we consider the read to me. It is 10 books. And um, if your teenagers want to do a little cheating, they can also read to a sibling and that counts. So. So they have no excuse. <laughs> they have no excuse. And we also do count the program attendance. If you attend some of our virtual or in-house programming, there will be, um, if they've done it before, there's a text box where you add a keyword that we show you that you only saw in our virtual program or in our meeting room where we had our program. And um, they can put that in on Beanstack, which is the platform we use to log their books. They will get their badge and it will uh, count it as a book read. So well, I hope everybody's taken advantage of those opportunities. I know I am. If you're interested in seeing any more of our virtual tours, we have them every Friday. Our next tour will be polar habitats. We're going to go where it's cold. Polar habitats followed by grassland habitats. For any of these videos, you can visit uh, Livingston Parish Library's Facebook or Instagram, or they even have a Twitter. You can visit their websites. You can visit Live Oak Middle School's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and we will post all these videos. I've also included a link directly to our website with all of our videos. We've hoped that you uh, have enjoyed your trip, and we will see you next week. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>